and each one was harder and harder and harder and then all of a sudden pow the biggest one I had so far was like the most painful and my water broke Hey guys, welcome back. So today I close the door a little bit. Okay, just a while. Okay, so that's I'm in Amelia's room. That's her old mattress. <laughs> so today I am going to talk to you guys about my labor and delivery. So if you guys see me looking down, that's because I'm looking at my phone. I have my notes because it's been like I'm three months, almost four months postpartum. Um, it's on September. 18th I'll be four months postpartum so I'm three months and two weeks postpartum now so things I may for have forgot I wrote it down so I can remember so if you guys new here welcome I am a mother of two now I have one girl who is four years old and a little baby boy who's almost three and a half three three and a half weeks months three and a half months <laughs> and my fiance is in there it's his birthday today so to start off um, I was having Braxton Hicks like crazy I was having them from like 30 I delivered 39 weeks and one day or 39 weeks 39 weeks so I was having Braxton Hicks from 37 weeks like they were getting more and more frequent I was like okay these are these are different Braxton Hicks these are uncomfortable <laughs> compared to my first my first one's like oh my stomach is tightening oh i feel it this one's like oh let me let me slow down a little bit right so those were a little bit more intense and more painful most of my braxton hicks was kind of like that uh, a little more painful i'm not sure it's because i had a prior c-section because my first if you guys didn't know my first was a prior c-section she had fetal distress her heart rate uh, would decline with every contraction so I had to have a, an emergency c-section so I wasn't sure if that has something to do with my stomach not being back to its shape you know so I'm not sure if that will contribute to my um, Braxton Hicks being so intense right so those was happening often at 39 38 weeks I had a doctor's appointment it was 39 38 weeks and six days I had a doctor's appointment that night or that morning and they did a, um, a check a cervical check and to see how far I was dilated and she checked me and said hmm um, is this the first time you were checked I was like yeah she's like huh you're one centimeter is dilated and 80% of face I was like oh no, no, it could be, you, could, you don't have no worries. It could happen anytime from now until, you know, your 40 weeks. But, huh, you are not. You haven't been checked. Okay. I guess it's, she was like, you're just 80% effaced. I was like, oh, I don't know. That's like, that's when the lining of your, your uterus to protect the baby from coming down is thinner. You know, um, with million when I was one centimeter, I was uh, like 40% effaced. And it was nothing. It was like. A little bit that's probably why my Braxton Hicks didn't hurt this one's I guess I was my body was getting ready <laughs> it wasn't actually Braxton Hicks like I thought it was to have this baby right so uh, I was having the contractions and then I was like oh these like the day before I was having contractions oh I gotta slow down these hurt a little bit oh these hurt a little bit okay they're not they're inconsistent they're like 10 minutes apart and you know 11 minutes apart and okay now they stopped Okay, now there's some more apart. Okay, I gotta use the restroom now. So if I use the restroom, they go away, you know? So I was doing that for a while and it was happening. So that night though, I was reading Amelia a book. <laughs> she was she was like the usual toddler self. No, I want a different book. No, and then contraction was coming. I was like, come on, Amelia, I just I just wanna read you a book and I wanna go lay down. <laughs> Because I was in so much pain. I'm like, I just want to lay down. I just want to read you a book. And then I'm going to lay down. And so I was reading the books. And in between sentences, I was like. And she's like, Mommy, come on. And I'm like, 
One moment, baby. <sighs> These hurt. <sighs> they brother kicking me or something, right? And so, so after I got done reading her book, I went to go lay down. Me and Chris uh, started to watch a movie. Uh, I was just laying there. I think it was one of the the um, Marvel movies. And so we were laying there, and I was like, oh man, Chris, these 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 hurt you know they're coming they were coming every seven minutes after that every seven minutes and so like these are starting to these don't feel too good <laughs> so uh, i was so i was laying there breathing through them I'm like, okay i'm gonna try to rest and each one was harder and harder and harder and then all of a sudden pow the biggest one i had so far was like the most painful and my water broke i grabbed chris so tight and i was like ah it was, the, it was so bad and then all the water just started gushing out mind you my water did not break with amelia they, they had to break my water in the hospital it didn't break when i had you know when i was pregnant with amelia and the something they don't tell you guys is once your water breaks your contractions intensify like whoo, zero to a hundred it's like pain pain and so my water broke. I said, Chris, go get a towel. Go get a towel. So we had to go get a towel. And I put a pad on. And that wasn't helping. So I, my pants were soaked. And so we rushed to the car. And I was walking to the car. And I had to stop. I could not talk to these two ones, right? Because I could talk to the other ones. I was five centimeters dilated with Amelia. No pain. No problem, right? And so I got to the, we got to the hospital. They had to put me in the wheelchair. And I was like holding onto the wheelchair like this. I could it felt like painful to even sit down. So I was just holding onto it, breathing. And then at the hospital that I went to, uh, Chris couldn't come up with me. That your significant other could not come upstairs because you had to go to triage. So they have to check you in, get your insurance, and yada yada, your name, and um, see if you actually are in labor before they admit you to the labor delivery room. So I went up there and I lay I was in the bed. She's like, so She's like, so you think you're in labor? And I was like, yeah, my water broke. And she's like, hmm, I don't know. Let's see. And I hate when they talk to you like you're dumb, you know, like you're dumb. And it's like, I know my water broke. I felt it, you know, I didn't pee myself. And she was like, I didn't tell her this, but she was like, well, you know, let's just let's just hook you up to these monitors, you know? And I'm like, she's like, well, hmm, so you think it broke? No, I mean, like, I know this protocol. She could just say, hey, you know, I know you, you felt your water break, but we want to, just for protocol purposes, we have to make sure it broke before we admit you. You know, she could just say something like that instead of being like, hmm, you sure you think it broke? You know, like, bro, I felt it. I know it broke. <laughs> and so she hooked me up to the monitors. And then as I was, well, before I, she hooked me up, I got on, it was getting undressed. And um, she was, I can hear, she pulled the curtains, I could hear her saying, she thinks she's in labor. She says her water broke. And I'm like, I know I'm in labor and I know my water broke. I felt it. Every contraction, water comes out, ma'am, you know? But anyway, I, I digress. So I got undressed. I put the, they came in, she put the baby monitors for my, for the contractions and the baby heart rate, the little two bands on my stomach. And you can see that the I was having contractions and active labor. And then uh, she checked me. She's like, oh yes, your water did break. And I was like, yeah, I know. She's like, okay, um, you are 80% effaced. And so far you are one centimeter dilated. I was like, okay, I, I kind of figured that because, you know, I just came from the doctor that day. I'm like, yeah, I know. And I was, she's like, okay, so just hang on for a little bit. And then, so I was laying there. I was like, man, this is one centimeter dilate. This hurts, you know, trying to breathe through it. And then, <clears throat> and so after that, I was like, I got to poop. <laughs> I got to poop. And I was like, Nurse, nurse, I gotta use the restroom. She's like, what? I was like, I gotta poop. She's like, oh my goodness, what? I'm like, I gotta poop, it's coming. I feel like it's coming. I gotta poop. She's like, oh my gosh, let me check you. And so she's like, you did poop a little bit. Okay, we're gonna admit you. I guess I dilated more. She didn't tell me or nothing. And she's like, we're gonna admit you. You can call your significant other now. Just hold on, just hold on. 
That's what she was saying. I was like, okay. I was like, I was still trying to make jokes. I was like, man, my first one did not hurt this bad. This one's, whoa, you know? So, so she woke me into the labor delivery room. Chris came upstairs and he, so he was just getting situated with all our stuff. And he's like, do you want me to record? And I was, I said, no, because I was in so much pain. I wish he just went and did it and recorded. But I was in so much pain. Anything, he, you want ice cream? No. You want me to give you a hug? No. You want me to talk? No. Anything he would have said would have been no, because I was in so much pain. And I was holding him to the, to the bar at every contraction. And she was like, because I, I just got up there. She checked me. She was like, oh, you're four centimeters dilated. It was like an hour or two hours since you know from the floor to the upstairs he's like oh my okay well you're dilated four centimeters i was dilating like that you know like and so she's like would you like epidural or would you like fentanyl i was like uh fentanyl you know because i knew epidural uh caused my my firstborn to have her heart rate you know uh, these cells increase her heart rate dropped and so when I was in triage, they also told me that my doctor was not there. She's like, well, you know, your doctor isn't here. Before she ruled me up, your doctor isn't here, so we have the on-call doctor. I was like, please don't let it be a certain doctor, the one who did my first. And she's like, yeah, she's here. I, and I knew she, I'm not going to say her name just for privacy purposes, for her sake. <laughs> um, and so she... She delivered my first. I knew she was like C-section happy. She was on the news for not being for the people, you know, for the culture. And so, so I was like, oh man, I knew she gonna she C-section happy, and, uh, you know. And so she, so the lady back when I was uh, in labor and delivery, she was like, do you want epidural or fentanyl? I was like, I'll take fentanyl, you know. Hopefully that didn't change the, his heart rate or anything. So I took fentanyl. Uh, I was able to relax a little bit. I'm like, oh, this feels good. This feels so much better. Fentanyl did not last long, <laughs> guys. It took the edge out for a little bit. Like I was able, to, for a million, I was able to do mindfulness, relax your shoulders, and you go down, and relax your legs and your feet. And I tried that with <laughs> with this, and it did not work. It did not. Like I tried to like relax parts of my body. Don't tense up because it's supposed to help. And I just tensed and just, it didn't help. And then. I was in pain. <laughs> I would grab onto the sides of the handles and squeeze it and try to breathe through it. Uh, I was in bed. I did not walk. So eventually, I started to throw up. I was just throwing up over and over and over again. So they gave me some anti-nausea medicine because you know I was in ant I was in active labor by then. So the fentanyl wore it off, and I was like, "It's like, would you like some epidural now?" And I was like, "Yeah," because <laughs> I was in so much pain. I was like, "Yes," because I was like, "Okay, well I'm." I'm five centimeters dilated now at this point and I was at an active labor for maybe three hours and I was already five centimeters dilated mind you I was having contractions since I was in like 37 weeks um but I was having I wasn't it wasn't consistent you know and so uh, I got the epidural and then they switched nurses I hate when they switch nurses because the nurses I had the nurse I had she's like oh okay we can't this baby is very active I can't find his his heart oh there we go okay she moved him on the little thing and she found his heart right and then so they she's like okay well I have my shift is over right when she found it she said my shift is over and then another nurse came in they all rushed in oh my gosh oh my gosh we can't find his heart and I was like Oh, yeah, the nurse said he just moves around. She just had to move it to find it. She's like, no, no, no. His heart rate is decreasing. And I was like, oh, no, I don't, no, I don't want to. I just felt like epidural. Of course, I got epidural. And now it's going downhill from here. And so she's like, okay, well, we got to talk to your doctor um, in case of an emergency. And so they had me sign some papers in case of an emergency, C-section. And then so I got to the uh, the. The ladies were doing the, 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 they talked to, they consulted the doctor. Yeah, they consulted the doctor. The doctor was like, okay, the happy C-section doctor. She's like, okay, we're gonna do a C-section. And mind you, this doctor is the one who is C-section happy. And so and they were prepping me for, uh, and I was like, man, epidural, heart rate. And I felt like guilty and I was all sad. And I wanted my mom. And so this is the part that makes me a little bit emotional. And so, um, the doc the nurses came in to prep me and the nurses was like 
oh my gosh, the head is right there. She should just try. And then the other nurse was like, no, the doctor said we had to prep her for a C-section. And the other, the other nurse was like, but the head is right there. She could just, she could just go. She can just try. And I was like, can I try? And the other nurse was like, no, the doctor said we have to prep you for a C-section. And, and I'm thinking, well, if the head is right there, does that mean I'm 10, 10 centimeters dilated and I can push? Like, get him out of the fetal distress because he would be delivered, you know, from contractions? I don't know how that would work, you know. And then so they prepped me and I was being wheeled off to the labor and delivery or the C-section emergency room. Um, yeah. And Chris had to wait behind. So this time it felt like, okay, well, I knew what was going to happen. It didn't feel so... I knew not to make any jokes. If you see my last one, my last video, I made a joke about, you know, sacrifices, sacrificing like Jesus. And then um, then I made like Jesus died. That was my first one. And I was like, oh, no, I'm going to die. So it was all like traumatizing. The anesthesiologist, I think that's what they call anesthesiologist, the one who does the, the needle in the back. Right. She she was an African-American, a black woman, and she made it a good experience for me because I was so stressed out and I was like crying and she's like okay you gotta drink this drink and I don't know what that drink was for I don't know <laughs> so I she's like I was like oh my gosh she's like it tastes nasty so drink it like a shot I'm like I don't do shots she's like what she's like I was like I don't know I never did a shot she's like I wish it was my daughter because my daughter do shots all the time <laughs> so she was making jokes and then so I took it I was like oh it's nasty I took two drinks and then so I was prepared now they they do stretch your arms out like this and so I was prepared this time for them to stretch my arms out and she was like it's gonna be okay and she was talking to me and like uh rubbing my hair and you're doing a great job you know are you feeling nauseous because I, I did throw up I was like yeah I feel nauseous so okay we're gonna give you something for the nausea and I was like, yeah, can you make sure that Chris comes? Because they forgot him last time. She's like, they forgot him? Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. We're not going to do that today. And I was like, thank you. And so she got Chris. She was just rubbing my hair, rubbing my hair. And she was just like, it's going to be okay. You're doing a great job, Mom. You're doing a great job. And then I just started crying. I was like, God knew I needed a black person here with me because my mom couldn't be. And she's like, oh, sweetheart. And she touched her head. It's okay, and I was like, I was like, my mom just passed on Christmas Eve, <laughs> crying tears, you know, snot. And so, uh, they they <laughs> they delivered, and the nurse, the doctor was like, oh, everything is fine. Everything is fine. That's what she said. You suck. I didn't have to have a C-section. Are you telling me? I know. I I probably could have sued. But we didn't record her saying that, you know. But she was like, oh, everything is fine. I guess we didn't have to. Bruh. Bruh. Now I have two sections under my belt because you was in a rush to do a C-section. Come on, guess we didn't have to. Told you the monitor was off. Anywho, they pulled, they pulled the baby out. He was crying. Ah, you know, baby cries. Chris went over there, snip, snip. Uh, he was able to cut the umbilical cord, I believe, and then he brought the baby over to me and let me see him. And then I was just like, while they were doing all the sewing and everything, they, first they they did poke me before they cut and they said, "Do you feel this?" And I'm like, "No." And they're like, "Okay, good." But you do feel the the moving, the tugging, and the the shaking, the stretching. You know, you feel that, but you don't feel the pain of it. And this time I was more alert because they didn't drug me up like they did the first time. So I was more alert and then so they wheeled me to the other room and I was just crying and crying and I was like, did you call my uncle Junior? Chris, did you call uncle Junior? He's like, yeah, I called him. I was like, okay. And so they got the baby. He latched pretty well. He latched right away. They're like, oh wow. He latched so, he did it so good. I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I've done this before basically. So, so yeah, they got me to the, the room and I was uh, laying there and just trying to recover, couldn't move because, you know, just had abdominal surgery. And, but they expect me, they expected me to walk 10 hours after the surgery. I know that's supposed to be good for you. So I, I, I did what they told me this time. Last time it took me like two days to start walking and I didn't walk. And 
And so this time I walked and I got up. It hurt so bad. They had to the catheter in. They had to put a catheter in for the C-section. And because you have the epidural, so they don't want you peeing on yourself. So they put the catheter in. While the, I, the catheter was in, they can see my urine and everything. And there was blood in my urine. And they was like, oh my God, Doug, we're going to monitor you. And me and baby's blood, blood temp our temperature was very low. So they had to keep him warm and try to keep me warm because our temp was low. And I don't know what that mean. <laughs> they didn't do any blood transfusions and they didn't explain what that meant to me. They're just like, oh wow, mommy, you're you don't have a fever, but your your temperature is very, very low. So they just like, here are some blankets. You guys do skin to skin and keep him warm. And cause his they didn't put it under a lamp or anything. They had that and every <laughs> so I was just like, okay. And so I, when I went for the walk, it was so painful. Uh, every hour they come in, it felt like every hour, they come in, they have to push on your stomach to make sure that it's not hard and everything's moving um, like it's supposed to. And that when certain nurses, they push, they're like, oh, okay, I can still feel it there. It's, it's still good. It's not firming up. Like, I guess if it firms up, that means blood is pulling in your stomach or something. I don't know. Don't quote me. <laughs> and then some nurses just dig. <laughs> like they have a vendetta. <laughs> you know like they're making some pizza dough or something and that hurts so bad and every time they push on your stomach uh for at least for me every time they pushed on my stomach some blood came out so i had to make sure i had something to underneath and liners and uh their their pads that they had because that's what i use i i used their pads this time i didn't try to get any depends like i did last time i just used what they had and now uh, liam is his name <laughs> he he was born at 758 that the irony or 750 or 740 i put the right time at the bottom the irony of it is after he was born my doctor's shift started at eight eight o'clock and that's what happened with amelia like after she was born his shift started <laughs> like really really and so they had me moving around um she did one cut on my c-section so I didn't have two cuts. I she cut over the other uh, other C-section um, that I had previously. They took the catheter out at 12 hours. They said it could have been the bleeding could have been because they they nicked my urethra going in, and so that could have been the blood or something else happened. But they didn't really want to. They didn't. They they said, oh, it could have been this, um, but then the blood started to go away and it just became more urine. Um, I was more sore on one side of my body versus the other. I was more sore on my left side than my right. And the skin above the C-section was very sensitive. It was sensitive for a while, like a month. Still sensitive now, and I'm three months postpartum. So, And then it was burning, and it hurt. And for me, um, it took a while to get that sensation of I need to pee again. Um, that can't, like, so it took a while for me to get that feeling that I needed to pee. Um, and that that started to like come back maybe a month and a half uh two months postpartum like i knew i should go to the restroom so i just went but the urge or the feeling of you know that feeling that oh i have to pee was not there it could have been they did scratch my urethra or something happened in there <laughs> when they were doing something but i didn't have that feeling to to, to use the restroom until recently i'm like okay now i gotta go now i gotta go i can feel it um, so that took a while but yes yeah, so now i'm just in the recovery process uh, little man has a cold so he won't be shown here but I can show you pictures of him and videos of him right now uh, he, he is sick so he's sleeping so I'm taking this time off to just record he got sick because Amelia was it she, she goes to TK and you know kids bring viruses home to everybody and so his little immune system couldn't fight this thing so he's sleeping he's resting it off uh, but that's my labor and delivery story another c-section unsuccessful v-back i was trying to go for a v-back so that was unsuccessful could have been successful but it was unsuccessful but it turned out to be a better c-section story for me journey than it was the first time um so uh, even though my mom couldn't be there i wish to god that she was but um, people say that she's watching down from you from heaven, but I don't think so. I think she's up there having a good time with God and Jesus and having celebration. No time look at us as humans down here, you know. It says they up there celebrating and singing for God. They're not singing, they're not looking at you. 
<laughs> that's how I feel anyway um, with that guys I want to say thank you for watching and thanks for coming along with this journey and if you like this or if you have anything that happened to you or anything that I should know for my next pregnancy if I do have another kid leave them down below what was your journey like did you have any struggles VVAC successful failed all vaginal leave them down below and I'd like to hear your guys story too okay I'll see you guys later bye